This is a little different from most of my reviews because, as you can see, it is a revolver. Uh, I don't think I've actually done one of these before on screen. Uh, I've owned a TM revolver before and a Marushan. I uh, wasn't too impressed by either of them. But I can say, even though I've only owned this, this was a second hand gun, but I can say I've only owned this uh, a few days and it is the highest quality airsoft gun I've ever owned. Definitely the, the best made. There really isn't any comparison. You really, if, you, if you thought TM was high quality, you really need to try one of these Tanakas. Uh, usual kind of things you get with guns. Smith Wesson K frame revolver manual. As you can see on the box, got a nice bit of artwork. Uh, this is the Model 19 Combat Magnum. It's a 2.5 inch version, and the most important thing, which is why I bought this, was it is steel finish version. That's something that if you're going to get a Tanaka revolver, make sure you get one of the nicely finished ones. Uh, you'd usually get a long sort of gas extension nozzle, which I'll talk about later, because you really need it to fill the gun with gas. You get this old style speed loader. Pour them in, now. push them out like that. Uh, get the gun with the plug. Get that out of the way. Okay, I don't even need to say much about the finish. You can see how good this looks. I haven't been able to convince a lot of people this is... Well, when they, when they first pick it up, most people are convinced this is steel. If you look at the... Uh, let me see. If you look at the finish on this, as you can see, it leaves fingerprints. It's perfectly smooth. It's kind of oily. It looks just like some kind of glossy steel. But it's all plastic. It's incredibly convincing the way they've sort of polished this up and put this coating on. Even once it chips away, it reveals silver underneath. So it's incredibly impressive. So uh, as a revolver, there aren't a whole lot of features to go over on it, to be honest. Uh, you kind of, what you see is what you get with these kind of pistols. Um, but first thing you notice when you take it out is the weight. The TM pistols, they're kind of sloppy. They kind of have a bend in them where the grip is. Uh, they're very, they're kind of weak feeling. They're not very solid. Uh, most importantly, they're very light. Something interesting, TM recently released a Model 19 like this. Um... Even the one that they released with a 6-inch barrel is lighter than this. This weighs about 600 grams. It was very solid in the hand. Uh, it's also weighted differently. The TMs have got the gas tank in the grip, whereas this has the Pegasus system where it has the gas tank in the cylinder, which means this is more balanced towards the centre of the gun while the TM is in the palm. Um, I'm not sure it's more realistic, though I'd think, since this is wood and that's all metal. On a real one, you'd probably be balanced around here anyway, so that's probably realistic. Again, um, this is a steel finish version. It means that even though most of it's plastic, it's got an incredibly realistic metal finish. But it's really, really convincing. Especially if you get it in some natural light. Move by the window here. You can see how the light reflects off of it. See that? It looks oily, takes fingerprints. Very realistic finish. You really can't get much better than this on an airsoft gun. So yeah, very happy with this. Again, I got it second hand. You can find these new occasionally. Different models of them. But uh, they're pretty hard to find nowadays. Anyway, these aren't the grips that it came with. Um, as you might be able to see on the box here, it came with these plastic style uh, compact grips. Luckily, the great thing out of Tanaka, because they don't have a gas tank in the grip, they'll take any real steel grip. So all you have to do is, if you bought this model, Google um, Smith & Wesson K-frame grips, and it'll take any real grip. So I've got these nice uh, wooden ones on here, finger grooves, really comfortable. And uh, because they're made for the real one, they're uh, really nicely finished, and we've got the Smith & Wesson logo in there. So yeah, that's a great thing about Tanaka, is you, there aren't any other production revolvers like this that come with that feature. 
that I can think of. Definitely not the TM and um, Marusian, Marusian, sorry. So yeah, let's go over some of the trademarks we've got on the gun. Very realistic trademarks. Uh, it says, it's got the Smith & Wesson logo, trademark. It does say Tanaka Bucks below it, but uh, to be honest, if I was them, I'd be pretty happy to put my name on everything. They, they do such a good job with these guns. Uh, you've got Made in Japan. It's very hard to kind of get it not to glare with this shiny finish. Uh, Smith & Wesson. And then the ones that you most likely to look at, the ones on the barrel, Smith & Wesson, nicely stamped in. And 357 Magnum. Okay, so uh, go over a few different features. You've got a plastic part, pretty much all of the frame. The side plate here is metal. The cylinder is metal, but all the front is plastic. Although, again, with the weight and the look, you'd be very surprised. Uh, if you first picked this up, you'd probably be pretty sure that it's metal unless you already knew uh, front sight is plastic with a red insert the rear is sorry just try and get it focused the rear is an adjustable type with a white outline so you've got a good sight picture there looks nice even though i'm not really much of a revolver shooter you can see that uh I don't have any trouble sort of holding it. It's pretty much the ideal size for a revolver. It's not too monstrous, but it's not tiny as well. It's a good size. Anyway, as I said, the sights are adjustable. Other metal parts are the other sights themselves, uh, rear sight and the hammer, of course, which has got a nice fake firing pin on it, which looks really good. It actually uh, bends upwards every time it goes in there. That's how it uh, doesn't damage it. The actual firing pin is along the kind of axis of the cylinder. Uh, being a Smith and Wesson, the release, the cylinder catch is on the side here. Just push it forward, and you can get the cylinder out. The ejector rod is non-functioning uh, because this has fixed shells, as you can see. Uh, if you haven't, if you don't know about the Pegasus system, essentially everything is contained within this unit. Um, as you can kind of see, if you look through that hole, you can see that there's an inner cylinder and an outer cylinder. The inner cylinder is always fixed in the same place. So in, if you imagine this cylinder wasn't here, you'd have kind of a firing block. You'd have all the mechanisms sitting inside the cylinder. So you've got a gas chamber here. You've got a valve uh, that releases the gas and you've got a small magazine in the front. And then around that rotates this sort of fake cylinder. So it's quite a complex system. Pretty much this means that you get the most realistic revolver you can. The gas is released uh, by the firing pin striking the centre here. Gas, you put straight through that, you've got to line it up, you put it straight in here. And this means, as I said, you get the realistic grips and you get a good FPS out of them as well, very consistent. Um, the, the FPS is actually adjustable on these. Um, if I take the grips off, maybe in another video, there's a screw right here. Turn it all the way in. Uh, on this model, you're looking at about 300 FPS when you turn it all the way up, and all the way down, about 200 FPS. So um, it's really useful. You don't get a lot of guns that have got a fully adjustable FPS system built into them, especially if you get one of the big M500s, because they can shoot up to 400 FPS. Obviously, you want to tune it down a little bit if you're CQB uh, skirmishing. Uh, metal trigger, of course. Cylinder is metal, as I said. Uh, the yoke, sort of metal. As you can see, that's actually plastic, but uh, the finish rubs off to a silver uh, finish, which is quite impressive. So it's a conventional double action, single action revolver. So either a double action or single action. Uh, pretty much works perfectly. Obviously, with the FPS a little bit higher, with that screw, the trigger pulls a little harder than uh, if it was unscrewed. But uh, it's still very smooth. Nice trigger pull. Nothing to complain about there. And uh, it indexes into place every time. 
So it's a nice reliable system with this revolver. Something I was also impressed to see on it is it does actually have an adjustable hop up. If we open the cylinder, it's very hard to see, but uh, sort of right inside here, just above the barrel, you can fit in an Allen key. Uh, it does come supplied with the Allen key for it. You can just kind of see in there. You simply put it in uh, clockwise for more hop up, anti clockwise for less hop up. So it's really nice. So even a gun that you'd think is more of a collector's item. Got adjustable FPS, adjustable hop up, and I've actually been able to get decent performance out of this, uh, shooting out 300 FPS. Something that's very interesting uh, compared to other revolvers, obviously, it's not shell fed, which means you load the BBs into the front and the gas into the back. I was forced to buy, as it, uh, I'll sort of show why I had to get one of these little cans of gas. Here's a regular can of gas. There really is no way that without the gas extension nozzle that comes with these guns, which I don't have, you're going to be able to fill that. It's just not the right angle. Luckily, in the UK anyway, you can buy Abbey Ultra mini cans of gas, like you can see here. They're much smaller, and they let you get just about enough clearance to fill the gun. One fill of gas should be good for 40, 50, maybe even 60 shots. So you get quite a few cylinders worth. Right, so loading the BVs is uh, is interesting. There's kind of two ways of doing it, which together gives you a good capacity. I'll just go... Okay, as you can see here, that hole there is the gas release. You can imagine when that's in place, that's in line with the barrel. So that's your valve and gas, relief, uh, gas release in there. The cylinder opening above it is the magazine hole. Tanaka revolvers are very interesting in that inside the cylinder there's actually a mini magazine, uh, which I can demonstrate here. Instead of putting a BB in each hole, what you can do, there you go, so that's two BBs in there, three, four, five, and that's six BBs. Uh, so that's one BB sort of on the surface and there's five in the internal magazine. I don't believe you can get another one in. See. Actually, we did. So that should be six shots inside and one on the surface. Now, you could just leave it like this. And what that would do is every time the cylinder rotates, it reloads it for you. So there we go. There's all six shots. But uh, now what you can do, now all of these are loaded, you can refill that internal magazine again. So even though we've already got six shots, which you'd think would be the limit, we've got seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven in there. And see if we're able to fit a twelfth. No, a twelfth a twelfth is seems to be a bit too much uh, pressure on it. Yeah, okay, so that gives the revolver an 11 round capacity. So considering it's a more compact revolver, uh, you know, it's it's quite a short gun in terms of revolvers, um, you've got a decent capacity, and you've obviously got enough gas to shoot that 11 shots over and over. So uh, you're, you're not looking at incredible sort of practicality for skirmishing, but it's, it's definitely usable uh, with the FPS it's putting out, with the adjustable hop-up, um, you could use it for skirmishing, I probably will, but I think the most important thing about it is that finish. Um, it, it's totally seamless. Um, I, as I said, I really haven't had an airsoft gun before that has been as well made as this. It blows guns like TTM, blows, blows them out of the water, it's perfect. And I'm definitely going to look into getting some more of these. I may do a shooting test, so you can sort of get a good idea of how these shoot. Um, but uh, for the most part there's not a whole lot to cover because it's a very simple gun, it's a revolver there's, there's not really a whole lot you could do wrong with one of these so uh, I don't know, maybe if you're a skirmisher who's kind of getting fed up of their gas blowback getting jammed or venting having to fill it up sort of every magazine a Tanaka revolver would be a really nice change especially if you appreciate a high quality gun 
because uh, you just pump the BBs in, give it, give the cylinder a spin to load them up, pump some more into the magazine. On the larger models, you've got uh, I think 12, 13, 14 shots, which is good enough. Uh, you've got a piece that everyone's going to be wanting to have a look at because you really don't see revolvers this nice around. And um, I really do totally recommend these, especially if you can get some nice real wood grips for them. They're great sidearms. I guess the only other thing to do would be to do a quick size comparison. Uh, revolvers are simply a different shape. They're hard to compare to a semi-auto. As you can see, um, it's got a barrel length shorter than a Glock 19, but the gun itself is longer. That, that's just the nature of a revolver. Um, you can't really avoid that. It's all thinner except the cylinder. It's a taller gun. It's just different shapes. As I said, it's really hard to compare them. It's just a very different feel. But um, it's definitely a good feel. If you're used to semi-autos, it makes a really nice change to have real wood grip, moving cylinder, which you shouldn't spin and slam in, by the way. That's just not good for them. You're going to break your gun if you do that all the time. Best way to keep a Tanaka working nicely is to treat it well, because parts for these are impossible to find, so take good care of it. And it should last a long time, because they're really well made. I might make some follow-up videos on this, but for now, I think that just about does it. Uh, thank you for watching. More reviews on the way.